whenever the oil spilled happened, how the pastors came together and the prophets came together. Can you just share that story before we transition? Sure. Um, back, I think it was 2012, uh, around, we had the BP oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico that started in Louisiana, um, it, dumping millions and millions of gallons into the Gulf waters. It, it, it went into the estuaries of, of um, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and then it was heading towards us. And it literally came a six foot thick sludge of oil that was out in the Gulf of Mexico, just off our shores. And you know what? We have responsibility for our own territory. And so um, my husband, I was out of town at this time, but my husband and a couple of our prophetic elders and some of the other local area pastors decided, you know what? We're going to take authority over what the enemy wants to do. Because I mean, our tourism is our, our bread and butter in this area. And if that sludge came on our beaches, we'd be ruined for decades. So um, they actually went out on a boat one day, a bunch of these area pastors and leaders, and they took giant bottles of anointing oil. They drove out to the oil spill and they poured anointing oil on oil spill oil and they forbid the oil from coming into our shores. We actually took our church out, had them put their feet in the water, put their hands out to the waves. It's a prophetic act and just declared that God's given us the keys of the kingdom, that whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Another translation says, whatever you forbid is forbidden. Whatever you allow is allowed. And so the Lord said, what, are you going to just allow this? <laughs> so we went out to the beach and we said, no, nope, we're going to forbid it. So we had our, our whole congregation every single day forbidding that oil from coming on our shores. And it sat literally two miles off our coast for weeks and weeks. And they would say, it's coming tomorrow. It's coming tomorrow. I want you to know that because the people of, of God in this whole region took a stand and said, we will not allow this oil to come ashore, that that oil never actually came ashore in our region. Mm -hmm. And one day the the, the scientist just said, we don't really know what happened, but the oil disappeared. So <laughs> we believe in the power of exercising our authority in the earth, that our job is to make this earth look like heaven. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. And you know, what's so interesting too, they also have the um, a plaque out there now mm -hmm. that they do in, in the city of Destin, which is where this was going to affect the most. They actually have erected a uh, a statue or, or a plaque in the middle of the marketplace down on the on the pier and it actually says to the glory of god who <laughs> kept this area from being destroyed by the oil spill god kept his hand and kept the oil from coming ashore so i mean i mean that the whole community gives glory to god saved and unsaved all those salty boat captain captains <laughs> recognized yeah. that it was god that kept the the waters clean and that kept our beaches safe and so what we began to find out is that witchcraft and poverty were, uh, are rooted together in the land. And we would watch businesses open and then businesses closed. We would watch um, uh, houses built and then they would go into foreclosure. We were dealing with this poverty. As a matter of fact, in the state of Florida, there's 67 counties. We were number 64 out of 67. At, on the economic scale. So we were one of the poorest counties in all of Florida. And we realized that if something was gonna change, we had to change it. We had to take authority over the demonic structures that were holding our territory in captivity. We had to discern what God had originally planned for our territory, what God's original decree was over our territory. And then we had to understand how the enemy had come in to to, to co-opt that and to actually hit us with exactly the opposite. And so when, whenever we go into a region or a territory that we're trying to discern what God has originally intended, many times we actually find that the enemy comes in and hits the area with something that's exactly opposite of what God has originally in, intended. So as a matter of fact, we found that in our county record books, um, our, our property was, well, our territory was called poor man's island. That's, this is go, goes back over a hundred years that our little territory that God had moved us into was called poor man's island. And we started discerning. We started asking God to reveal the roots that were in the, in the earth. And to make a very long story short, we, we walked, we prayed, we prophesied, we, did, we made prophetic decrees, we did prophetic acts. This was over a process of time. But I'll tell you, at one point in the year 2000, the Lord actually gave us some very keen insight about spiritual strongholds that were over the area. 
And um, I, I won't take the time to go into that in great detail, but I will tell you that when God gave us the understanding of what those strongholds were by name, we were actually able to go out and actually with in conjunction with other prophets, in conjunction with a spiritual body of believers, fasting and prayer. It wasn't just something that we just launched off to do. It was something that we did with apostles. It was something that we did in concerted effort to deal with these spiritual strongholds. But I will tell you that when the Lord spoke this to us and we, and we engaged in this battle, we actually saw our county go from being one of the poorest counties in Florida to be named the richest real estate market in the entire continental United States within 18 months. Now our, our, our territory is blessed, it's prospered, it is, um, it is the vacation destination of the rich and the famous. We have broken the spirit of poverty off. Several years into it, we had to realize that instead of poverty, a spirit of greed had come in. So we had to back up a little bit and we had to deal with it with that spiritual force and that spiritual foe. See, I believe that when we actually go in and we start looking at bringing transformation uh, to a territory, we see that that's what the entire story of the conquest of, the, of Canaan was about. It was about driving out giants. It was about establishing what God wanted established in the land. And God said to Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah, I've called you as a prophet to the nation and here to the nations. And here's the description of what you're going to do. You're going to root out. You're going to throw down. You're going to destroy. You're going to pull down. And then you're going to build and plant. And so we can never just deal with spiritual strongholds. You can never just try to build something for God. You've got to do something in tandem where you're driving out the things that the enemy wants to establish in the land and you're establishing what God wants to see established in the land. I, I try to teach people that, um, that we, when we go into a territory, we look at three things. We look at who or what is being worshipped in that territory. What are the worship structures in that territory? Number two, who controls the supply lines? Or in other words, who's controlling the money? Where is the money coming from in that territory? Or in our case, where? why wasn't there money flowing in our territory? Why was there a, an entrenched spirit of poverty? And number three, we look at power structures. And God will come in and he will expose uh, corrupt power structures or people that are in governance over that area. And that begins to cause things to be overthrown. In one of our neighboring counties, we actually went um, a few years ago and my husband got up and prophesied one of the first nights that we were there. And he said, the Lord shows me that the good old boys, if you're in the South, you know what that means. The good old boys, they're the, they're the ones that are kind of connected, that kind of rule, rule, rule things or run things. And he said, the, the good old boys have not been so good in this territory. And the Lord says, I'm getting ready to deal with them and I'm getting ready to overthrow them so that righteousness can reign in this land again. I want you to know within the next year, God exposed corruption within the leadership of that county and a bunch of the county leaders actually went to jail. <laughs> They're in prison today because of the corruption that they were dealing out in, from their governmental position. God overthrew that, put righteous people in, and now that county's actually flourishing. And so I want people to understand that this is actually possible. And God needs prophets that can come together, not just lone prophets. I think Patricia is going to talk about that, but we've got to be connected together. We've got to understand that it's not just a, a one-time thing, but there's a long range strategy that has to be employed by people on the ground. When God decides to bring um, a transformation or, or, or awakens a people to bring transformation into a territory, there's usually um, an initial prophetic word or an initial prophetic strategy that gets employed. And then usually it's the long run of, uh, of actually praying, prophesying, discipling, winning souls, beginning to bring, we, we talk about the air war, which is dealing with air superiority, just like if when we go into war, we establish first an air superiority, superiority, that's dealing with principalities and powers, but then that's insufficient. You've got to have a ground war that goes in and wins souls, casts out devils, uh, sets captives free, and begins to bring liberty. You actually see this happening in the book of 
uh, of, of uh, the Ephesians and throughout the book of Acts uh, dealing with the city of Ephesus, which was a center for idolatry and witchcraft, magic training, um, all kinds of corruption. And yet the church went in there and actually released revival in that city and people ended up bringing their magic books and burning their magic books, even though they were very expensive magic books. And ultimately, within the next several years, the entire temple of Diana was toppled and never rebuilt from that point forward because Christianity had a major impact in the city of Ephesus. Did it become a Christian city? No, but it impacted and transformed the city and gave the people in that city an opportunity to come to Christ because the spiritual strongholds that had been over that city were actually shattered and gave an opportunity for a revival to come in. And so I think that's my 10 minutes, um, maybe a little bit longer, sorry about that. And uh, I'm gonna just release it back, but I believe that God is in the business of not just changing lives, but also changing cities and territories.